Chances are you clicked this video because you're already plant-based, but you're looking for ways to accelerate your results, meaning losing fat faster and getting in shape much, much faster. Now, you've probably looked into a lot of different vegan diet alternatives, which I wanna debunk in this video. Do not do the seven vegan diets that I'm gonna share with you right now. Why can I share this? Because I've helped over a thousand vegans at this point over the past years with one-on-one -on -one coaching. I specialize in that and I've seen all these people fail and struggle and I will explain how to do it instead. The first diet that vegans like to go to is the vegan keto diet, which is basically a low carb version of the vegan diet, which just by starting off makes no sense at all because the plant-based diet is very high in carbs. So by cutting out all the carbs, what can you eat? You can eat tofu and seitan and tempeh, nuts and seeds. It really limits the amount of things you can eat. The biggest thing that's wrong with the vegan keto diet is that you're eating a low carb diet, which means you don't have energy for your workouts, you not have strength, you'll be super weak, you won't be able to move any weights, or endurance training will also suffer from being a low carb diet. Also, your brain runs on glucose, so if you don't have enough carbs, which is glucose, then you will have brain fog every single day. You won't be able to focus, get work done, be there, be present for your family because you have brain fog, right? And the third reason why vegan keto makes no sense because it's not sustainable, right? I mean, who enjoys cutting out carbs or being able to eat potatoes or rice or pasta? Those are foods that you went vegan for in the first place. So you cut out all these foods, what's gonna happen is you're gonna crash and burn and you're gonna have binge eating attacks and you will basically just go backwards and gain a lot of weight. So do not do the vegan keto diet. The second vegan diet people like to go to is the 80-10-10 vegan diet, which has you eat more carbs, right? So as you can see, vegans like the extremes. They like to eat no carbs, being vegan keto, or eating 80% of the diet being carbs, which is 80-10-10. So 80% carbs, 10% fats, and 10% protein. That's where the mistake lies. You're not getting enough protein, you're not getting enough fat on this diet. Why do you want to have protein? Pretty simple, so you can recover from your workouts, actually build muscle, also lower your risk of all-cause mortality, which is a study showing that that will happen if you increase your plant protein intake. Why do you want to have fats? Because fats are important for your hormones. You want to have healthy hormones. So if you eat a low fat diet, there's a lot of adverse effects that can happen because of that. Also, your meats are going to taste very, very bland without protein and fat. And you're not going to be satisfied. So carbs are the least satisfying macronutrients. Protein is the most satisfying. So eat an 8 to 10, 10 diet, you're just gonna be hungry all day. And trust me, I've tried this myself, and a lot of clients who came to us struggling have tried the same approach too. So do not do the 8 to 10, 10 vegan diet. Next we have the raw vegan diet, which is a crowd favorite too. For whatever reason, what can you eat on a raw vegan diet? You can eat raw fruit, raw veggies, sprouted lentils, raw tofu, like it gets very, very limiting. And I know that a lot of people just wanna do it for the short term. There's also a lot of people who think it's a long-term solution. It's not. If you're gonna eat a raw vegan diet, what's gonna happen is firstly, you're gonna lose important nutrients because some nutrients, if you didn't know, only get unlocked from veggies and other foods while cooking them, okay? So for example, tomatoes. Also, you're gonna not be able to hit your protein needs because you're gonna just be able to eat sprouted lentils maybe some raw protein powder, and that's pretty much it, right? And again, it's not gonna be sustainable. You're not be able to eat out with friends. You're not gonna be able to enjoy yourself. When you start eating normal again, you start gaining all the weight back. So if you're trying to be a raw vegan, do not do it because you're gonna lose out on nutrients, not get enough protein, and you will drive yourself crazy. The juice diet is another diet that vegans like to follow, which basically has them only drink certain juices for like 30 days or 60 days. And the idea behind it is to detox your body, to lose all the weight, and to really feel healthy again and cut out all the junk. You're already cutting out all the junk being vegan. You're already eating super healthy, and you're not able to detox your body because it's already detoxing itself every single day. If we wouldn't flush out all the bad stuff every day, we would be dying, right? So our body's already doing that. You don't need to juice diet to make that happen. Also, you might lose a lot of weight very fast, but it's not gonna be sustainable. You're gonna end up going back to eating normal after and you're gonna gain all the weight back and some on top after you go back to eating normal. So juice diet is not sustainable. It's not healthy for you. Obviously you're missing out on protein, on carbs, on fats. You're gonna lose muscle. 
Also, people forget that you're probably gonna end up looking skinny. And most people watching this video, you might be wanting to have a toned and fit body. And if you just drink juice for 14 days, 30 days, whatever it might be, you will lose all your muscle mass and you will end up looking very skinny with no muscle, no strength, feeling weak, feeling low energy, and just realizing, wow, I just maybe lost 20 pounds in a month, but I hate my life and I'm gonna gain my weight back. So definitely not a good choice. Do not do the SOS free vegan diet, which stands for salt, oil, and sugar free vegan diet. And the reason being is, yes, the intentions are there. You might think, hey, these ingredients are unhealthy. You wanna avoid them at all costs. The truth is, it's not the case. Like salt, oil, and sugar in itself are not harmful for you. You always need to see it in the context of the diet. So a lot of studies have been done on these ingredients, have been done on people who are eating an unhealthy diet in the first place. So if you have these three things in moderation, you can totally have them and still be a healthy and fit vegan. In fact, it might even help you stay the course, stay on track, because how can a food be enjoyable without salt, right? Without maybe pan frying it with oil, without having some dessert with sugar? you're gonna go crazy and you're gonna restrict yourself and what's gonna happen, and I saw this with a lot of people coming to us for help in our coaching program, they just end up binge eating and they end up having a very unhealthy relationship to food, seeing it for black and white, this is good, this is bad, and then ending up quitting their fitness journey, quitting the plant-based lifestyle and realizing it's not sustainable. So if you wanna have a healthy relationship to food, and eat the foods you like, because salt, oil, and sugar, it's gonna be tasty foods, then include them and do not exclude them. That's not gonna help you crush your goals. One more variation a lot of vegans like to follow is the no soy and no gluten vegan diet. Okay, so again, they're going another step. They're restricting themselves further. I can put some studies here on the screen showing that soy is not something to be worried about. A lot of vegans still think, hey, will I have low testosterone? Will I be feminized? Or will I have other side effects from eating too much soy? It's not the case, you don't have to worry about it. I would just make sure to limit it to 70 grams of soy protein every single day. So not 70 grams of soy, but 70 grams of soy protein. Because once we go above that, there are some studies that might show some adverse effects. So soy, nothing to worry about. Gluten on the other side as well. So a lot of people think gluten is very inflammatory, gluten is unhealthy for your gut, and all of these things that you might find online. By the way, the gluten-free movement is mostly marketing. They implanted it into people's brain that having a diet high in gluten is gonna affect your brain, it's gonna affect your digestion, and then they basically introduce gluten-free foods, which now people buy over and over, and it's great marketing. But you don't need to worry about gluten if you're not allergic to it. If you're celiac, if you have celiac disease, definitely avoid gluten, but that's less than 1% of the population a lot of people think they're gluten intolerant, while in fact they're not. And if you cut out gluten, again, you're cutting out a lot of fun. And also you're cutting out one of the best protein sources, which is seitan. So if you're vegan right now, trying to lose fat, gain muscle, then cutting out soy and gluten is gonna lead to you not hitting your protein needs, not enjoying your life, and for no reason at all, because there's evidence showing that you don't need to worry about either of those. Last but not least, the whole food only diet, which is also something that people like to follow because they're like, hey, I wanna eat as clean as possible. I wanna cut out all the processed foods. I wanna be the best. I wanna be 100% on track. And again, the intentions are great, but that's where the failure comes in because no one can be perfect, especially when you have a busy life, you have family, you have a job, you have things going on, you're gonna end up hating your life and you're gonna end up falling off track and binge eating. But also eating only whole foods is gonna make you bloated. Like only whole foods are very high in fiber and also it's gonna to lead to malabsorption of nutrients when you eat too much fiber as well. If you wanna lose weight and gain muscle, you gotta have enough protein. If you're eating a whole food only diet, you won't be able to do that only with chickpeas and lentils and beans. I tried it, <laughs> trust me, like I can put the videos and photos on screen again, I tried it and it didn't work and I really, really struggled. So I love the intention of eating whole foods only, but you don't need to. You can have 80% whole food diet and the rest can be some processed foods to hit your protein and to actually feel sane on a vegan diet. So what I want you to do instead is have a more balanced approach to your diet. Yes, base your diet on whole foods, but don't be afraid of processed foods to get your protein, get your nutrients, and also enjoy your life. A diet should be inclusive and not exclusive. And if you wanna have long-term results, you don't just wanna lose weight and gain it back, right? You wanna keep the weight off, then make sure to have a balanced diet. That's how you're gonna be successful. 
and definitely avoid all these seven vegan diet variations that are not going to work for you.